Oh, yeah. Well, I was born in Bronfenville. That's all I can tell you to start off with, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, my father, really named Bronfenville, uh, he was a manufacturer in New York, and he brought the people down to, to Bronfenville, and he built a factory, and he brought all his help down, and they made manufactured coats, ladies' coats, in Bratmanville, named Bratmanville after my father. And I used to bring some goods from the station in Norma uh, so they can operate on the factory. And then I uh, worked on the farm a little. What kind of farm did you have there? Yeah, we, we had a lot of grapes. And I used to cart grapes to the Byman, tons of it, sell it there. Also, at that time, we didn't have no refrigeration there in Byland, in Bradford, rather. And I used to go down to Parvins and bring ice down so we can use it to keep things cold. Well, uh, we were ten in a family, and we were all born in Bratmanville. And uh, then I started working in the factory. There we had a factory, and I learned the trade as a cutter and designer. And well, when your when your father moved to Bratmanville, where did he come from? We come from uh, when father went from Bratmanville. My father, you mean? Yeah. Well, he, in New York. New York. He comes from New York. So he come from New York. He brought down the, all these people, and he built a factory there. And what did he and do with the people that he brought over with him? He built houses for them, and they didn't pay him rent at all. Uh, he gave them a donation, like. You mean they lived, on the, they lived in the houses and worked in the factory? Is that it? That's right. That's right. They worked in the factory there, in the house. And then I got to know the factory, and I had learned to trade there, too. And uh, become a cutter and designer. Did all the children work in the factory? Not all, no. We had three stores. My father had three stores there, one in Vineland, one in Bristol, and one in Millville. And uh, one of the, some of the children was in the stores. And uh, that's all the work. My father was, uh, he was in the factory. My grandfather was also in the factory. What did you manufacture? The manufacturers' ladies' coats. Ladies' how many, coats. How many people did you have employed there? Well, we had about a hundred people, I think. We couldn't count them. We had five floors in that factory. Did everyone who lived in the town work at the factory? Or there was more All of them uh, that lived in the town worked at the factory there, Bratmanville. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they have farms, too? Well, I, we had a farm. I worked on the farm. I used to... We had about a hundred acres, and then I used to cart the uh, grapes. We had a lot of grapes. We used to cart it in New York, in Vineland, by the tons. We used to sell it there. By horse and wagon? Is yeah, by, uh, I had two horses hooked up in a wagon. And I used to bring uh, the goods from the Norma station to the Rottenville uh, factory to they could work on, you know. And we had we had a lot of things to do there at that time. Did it change much? Did the town change much? It didn't change much there later. And uh, we had, and then I was on a baseball team there. Tell also, when I was younger, I used to, we called ourselves the Bratmull Social Club. And I used to be the be down in the catcher, and uh, we used to have a good team. We played different teams like Norman, different clubs, you know. And uh, well, that's how Norma? we passed our time. Yeah, where was Norma? Norma's about uh, about a couple miles, about two miles, I imagine. And was that a Jewish settlement? Yeah. Also, a Jewish line? family, mostly Jews around there, and the Lions, Bratmanville, and then. I, I told you about Parvins, 
used to go there and bring ice so they can have some, keep getting cold. Didn't have no refrigeration at that time. And uh, other was things. The first synagogue built there. Hmm? Where was the first synagogue built? Well, uh, about the same time the place was built, built these houses and everything else. And uh, was your father play a, a role in building the synagogue? What did he oh yeah, he was. He, he he was the main chief there. My father. Really? Yes, he was. And uh, he used to have people come down for the burden here first in New York and help out. Like Mr. Fells come down and shows how to plant things in the garden, help out there. That was Fells and uh, Fells would be Fells Fells napkin soap, you know. Uh, they used to come down. And people from big people from New York, I, the names right now I can't remember. But they uh, come down every week to see how things were running. They helped out, and it seemed that the people got everything they wanted. That uh, that's how they run this town there. Now, within your own household, how were things run? What did your mother my do? My mother's house. We had a big house there. We old. My mother had always two servants there. I helped my mother most of the time. I liked to help her. And uh, I'm not sorry about that. Did you take know. care of the younger children? I, oh yes, I took care of the younger ones, helped her out with all that housework when she necessary. Huh? Was she a good cook? My mother, one of the best. These people from New York said, well, we never ate food like that. <laughs> that's a fact. Yes, that's how these things were run down there, and we were satisfied. And we grew up then, the boy, I grew up, my older brothers, we decided we don't want to stay there no more. We moved to Vineland. Where did you go to school? Oh, down there, I think Bridgeton, Bridgeton High School. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, then we decided, the boys grew up, they wanted to go, one wanted to go to Vineland, some wanted to go to Philadelphia. And uh, finally landed in Vineland. In Vineland, I was there, uh, I guess I was 22. And uh, I was drafted in the First World War I. I was two years in the Army. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back, well, we, my brother Sam also was in the Army, he passed away. And uh, we decided to go to Philadelphia, and that's how it ended there. We stayed in Philadelphia, and I opened my own business there too, in, in the clothing business. What? Where did you go overseas during the war? I went to the Quaker, Quaker, uh, the quartermasters. I was ready that uh, same day. I was ready to go to France. But uh, I got notice from one of my captains there that they wanted to see me. And they had to transfer me over to the quartermasters. And there I stayed until I was the I charged. That's the, that's the end I can tell you about this. Um, what when, you when your parents were strict. Were, hmm? were your parents strict when you were growing up? Oh yeah, my parents were very strict when we were growing up. When I was 13 years of age, my mother gave me a gold watch and chain and everything. And we had to go to the synagogue. And when the time comes to like Friday or Saturday, you know, we were very strict, my father was. And we couldn't go out at night late, because he waited there for us. Many times he took our shoes off to come home. <laughs> At one time, uh, I, we weren't allowed late. My, bro my, my, brother, my brother Herman Michelin, he passed away, and uh, we got in bed. We slept in the same room. My father started to beat me because I come home late. It was my brother Herman that was out that night. There's a lot of these things happened, you know. In young life. Did you agree with, with them? I mean, did you think that they were sort of strange because they came from Europe 
or in that you had different ideas, that it was different? No, I didn't know any difference. I, I, I believed in my parents always. I was nice to my parents, and they were nice to me. I don't complain. So I grew up nice, and I, I know how to talk to them, and I did what they told me, and I, I, I appreciated it. So you got along very well? Yes, we did. I always did the right thing, and I didn't ever do anything wrong. That's one thing. I can't either. Uh, now, in terms of age and the hierarchy, who was the older than you were? My brother Sam. Was he the oldest? And I had a brother Joe. He was the oldest. He also passed away. And uh, I had younger ones. I had a, a, my brother Her uh, my brother Herman was next to me. My sh uh, Herman. And then I had a brother, Saul, and I had a brother, Aaron, which was a turning violent, it was solicitor violent. He passed away, he was a very beautiful, boy, wonderful boy. We missed him. My, my, my own. All right, we'll wait, we can wait for a minute. Let's stop. All right, you wait? Yeah, we'll just stop. We can talk some more. I can, talk, I can know a lot of things that come to my mind. No, I'm not tired at all. I, I, I'm glad to do that. I'm glad to do that. I tell you, I'm glad I have to go back to these days because I feel better to do that. And uh, I want to talk about Stanley now. No, wait a minute. Just a minute. Let's talk about Stanley. You, about you, you, you're, you're in Brockmanville, wasn't you, Stanley? No, I remember, I remember, yeah, the first memory I have of the family is back on Plum Street, at 231 Plum Street, and you would come down and visit. You and Lillian would come down on a weekend and visit. Did he look, do you remember him looking like that? I mean, is that he looks younger. Oh, my father looks younger here. He looks something like uh, our family. How old do you Did think you have a derby like that too? I had not a different style they wore that time when I wore one. I was just... But did you have a suit like that and the watch chain and all? Yeah. I had a chain, but not a long coat like that. <laughs> you see, we were more modern that time when I was. Yes, very young. And that's a style. That's a style. That's a style it was when he was that age. I think he must have been about thirty-five when he wore that outfit. Very good, Gilbert. You think I did all right? Well, we're going to sign you up and give you're, you a contract. You How's that? Make a good that's good.